Hey guys, what's up? This is Shekhar Suman here from Biotechnica and you're watching TS3, The Shekhar Suman Show. Welcome to the show guys and uh, today, as always, I am back with more news, views and reviews from the biosciences industry, the biotech and pharma industry. So, today's news is a correlated news to something which happened last month. So, last month at around on i think 8th of october uh, the union minister of uh, science and technology dr jitendra singh uh, tweeted that india will be among the top 5 bio manufacturing hubs by 2025 now it sounds exciting he went on to say that India's uh, bioeconomy is going to be $150 billion by 2025. And uh, that means a lot of opportunities for all of us. Well, m I and of course, most of the people from our generation have a habit now of taking everything with a pinch of salt. So I definitely took this news with a pinch of salt. I've been listening to this kind of uh, statements from politicians and um, higher officials of uh, our government from past like 15 years now. So the first thing which logically comes is how. How exactly biosciences economy, the bioeconomy of India is going to get to $150 billion and how um, we are going to become a Top, uh, become uh, major players, top five players in the biomanufacturing sector. So this how has been in my mind since past one month. And of course, um, one of the answers and solutions to this is encouraging more entrepreneurs into the biosciences sector, encouraging young youngsters to um, get into uh, entrepreneurship, starting new companies into bio manufacturing and uh, various other sectors of bioeconomy. But having said that, uh, bioeconomy is somewhere um, very much vulnerable. If it does something good, it becomes a counterparty to debates. And if it does something um, great, then everybody makes a beeline and takes the advantage. Let's take the example of CRISPR. There's, there's a lot of debates going on against CRISPR and in, in pro of CRISPR. But at the same time, uh, we saw bioeconomy churning out vaccines in record 12 months and that's how we're sitting here right now. You watching me speaking, isn't it? So bioeconomy is very vulnerable. So if bio entrepreneurs have to be encouraged, there has to be a lot of hand holding. See, personally, when I was starting out into the biotech sector, I needed a, bad, a lot of um, hand-holding, but unfortunately there was none. Of course, a few people came forward, apart from my family and friends who supported me. But the next generation, the young generation only can take us to the goal which um, our union minister says. Now, our politicians have this habit of making statements, but the doers of this economy is us. You, me, all of us. Now, our Prime Minister's dream of a trillion dollar economy by whatever date he has decided can never be possible without the contribution of the youth, the youngsters who are a part of the bioeconomy right now, who are studying right now, who are um, into research right now, who are into their starting, middle or um, higher levels of research. So having said that, uh, bioeconomy can only flourish if bio entrepreneurs are encouraged, right? So this is what I was thinking for past one month. Now today, another news has come, which I'll just read out for you. So this news says, government launches first ever mentorship program for young innovators. Now, this just was tweeted by again him only, um, a few hours from now. 50 hours ago. Now that's something which answers my how. Because the young innovators like you, right, has to be supported, has to be nurtured. And 
if that happens then by 2025 it can jump to 200 billion dollars also because more contributors are required we don't want followers we want executors who can dream it who can envision it and you can achieve it right so that's how it can happen and so this is a welcome news i'm putting the links of all these these news in the description below please check it out so yes government has launched this first ever mentorship program for young innovators and the best part is it is called as dbt star college mentorship program that means department of biotechnology is involved so it's a great opportunity for all of you all of us and uh, this means definitely we can inch forward our go towards our goal now having said that there is a contradiction okay now see i am very vocal about um right things whether it is um anti government or pro government i don't care what i care is our people in the biosciences sector must be taken care of because they took care of this country they took care of this world when the need was there the whole world was just um, just thumping the politicians were just thumping 1 billion vaccines administered but if there was no bharat biotech if there was no serum institute correct so the contributors of biosciences economy and the future contributors of biosciences economy right now are in geopardy so if uh, we are talking about young innovators and encouraging them then definitely we should also be talking about something which is contradictory here and that is no csi net exam for past one and a half year now one year now okay we are running late by one and a half year and the exam has not happened for for past one year now these young innovators how would they become if they uh, you know don't get a platform csi net is one such platform so my request to minister dr jitendra singh and his team is merely making announcements is not enough please if you are really serious about the goals which you are setting for all of us we are ready to achieve but help us help the country how did we do that if you can't conduct a small exam like csi net we are hardly 5 lakh researchers aspiring research researchers write this exam i think we're not doing justice for this country i'm pained here to say this that yes on one hand there is hope but on the other hand there is a despair for my students for my colleagues for my uh, people out there so i urge the government i urge everybody to sign a petition which i have started the link is given in the description the petition is called as get well soon csir hrdg and nda okay so please sign that petition petition it's democracy and democratically we must um, post our views and reviews and uh, i invite all of you to tweet that link to all the ministers and uh, csir hrdg as well as nta because their soon is not coming up it is too late now we cannot sit waiting for the next csi net exam we have to get it we have to get answers from the government we have to get answers from our ministers whom we voted and we have to get uh, answers from the exam conducting authority because they are sitting on a pile of exams not conducting it and it is taking a toll on the future of our country it's taking a toll on the mental health of the future researchers and future scientists of our country so i don't think uh, we should be sitting back and relaxing this is the time to take action guys the petition is in the link below please post please sign it and tweet it now if you have 5 rupees okay if you have 5 rupees please buy a postcard write get well soon csir net csir hrdg and nta and please post it to csir hrdg address our democratic way of showing protest will definitely force these exam conducting authorities to take notice now on one hand there is hope on the other hand there is despair now if this despair is not taken care of then all the tweets and all the announcements from our ministers are going to go in vain right show this country that you don't just vote your executors 
our researchers, our executors, our students, our future researchers, our executors of tomorrow. So take action today. Sign that petition and take charge. Moving ahead. So this was all about my uh, pointer, which is a good news as well as a bad news. But there is something more to today's show. And that is a very, very nice interview posted by posted on one on YouTube. I'm putting the link below uh, of one of my, you know, gurus. He's the CEO of Anthem Biosciences, Mr. Ajay Bhardwaj. So over the weekend, I was listening to his uh, interview. And I'm sure most of you would not have noticed that being posted online. So that is why I'm putting the link below. I urge all of you to please watch that video till the end because he will give you a lot of insights about the biosector, bioeconomy. And he's one of the, uh, he's the CEO of one of the largest biosciences and biotech uh, company in India, Anthem Biosciences. And uh, one of my favorite lines from that video is, do jigging when others are jagging. Okay, and that's something which really uh, in synchrony with how I believe we should be doing. So while others are relaxing, you have to work hard. While others are jagging, you have to jig, you have to pedal harder. That's how you can achieve success. So he has some great messages out there in that video. The link is given in the description. Please watch it out. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Anthem Biosciences CEO, Mr. Ajay Bhardwaj has some great news for all of us. Okay. So moving ahead, um, now that we were talking about bio manufacturing, you know how things work at CSIR and all these research institutes is they um, do the research and then they sell it to companies or, you know, commercialize it. They pass it on to companies and those companies commercialize it and then, um, you know, it comes into the market, right? So, and we have seen a lot of successful um, research startups uh, coming out who don't get this advantage. Now, CSIR and all of these research institutes always hand over these technologies to established companies, right? So, there's one thing which we can do if we have to make India bio, uh, you know, a solid bio manufacturing hub or a future biosciences destination, then we should start handing over these commercially viable technologies from these uh, government labs to scientists who have entrepreneurial spirit. Okay. Remember Krishna Ella was a teacher, right? A lot of people out there who were, were into a different profession, but they had the entrepreneurial spirit and they, they had this um, urge to do something. They became scientists, they did some research and on their own self-made research, they succeeded. But India cannot become a global player in biomanufacturing if a handful of biotech companies are there in India. The need of the hour is to hand over these commercially viable technologies from CSIR and other uh, research com uh, labs to scientists who have entrepreneurial spirit. Now, how would that come? The DBT style program, which they have recently launched, this, this is a great step in that regard. And uh, I'm sure um, the authorities are listening to this um, show and they will definitely take notice. All right, so now is the time to take up some questions which our subscribers and fans of Biotechnica have sent across to me. So the first question which has come is, is PhD a necessary evil in the biotech industry? Now, that question itself shows the fear our people have about PhD coursework. So to answer that question, no, it is not a necessary evil. It is a necessity because our industry is constantly moving forward with newer technologies such as NGS, CRISPR, molecular docking and various such techniques. In fact, as I speak, maybe a new technique must be launched in the market. So when you are a specialist of a particular thing, your chances of getting placed in the biosciences industry is higher. And having said that, I have seen 15 generations of PhDs pass through Biotechnica and I see them well placed and I have see, I'm, I can see them uh, working on some great technologies and some great projects out there in the industry as well as academia. So on that basis, I can tell you that it's not a necessary evil it's a necessity. It's definitely not an evil. Now, 
The next question which has come to me is uh, from uh, Mr. Agnil Jos and he says, what was your motivation or inspiration behind starting Biotechnica? So thank you so much for your question, Mr. Agnil. Now, to answer your question, when my own sister could not get um, placed into the biosciences industry, I realized that there exists a huge gap and we have to fill that gap. And of course, later on, once we filled that gap, she was placed in one of the companies and later on, um, we started Biotechnica. But at the same time, we realized that many of my brothers and sisters across the country are facing the same problem. So why not help them plug that gap? And once they have plugged that gap, definitely it will uh, help them. So that is where we came up with the idea of Biotechnica. Now to answer your question, Biotechnica, the name itself has got two parts, Biotechnica. So bio, Biosciences and Nika. So Nika comes out of a Greek word. So Greek goddess of victory is called as Nike and bringing victory is called as Nika. So bringing victory to biosciences, that's what Biotechnica is all about. And that's how we started Biotech Biotechnica. That's how we got into this domain. And we were highly passionate about helping people. That, that was something which was inculcated in me and my sister um, uh, since several, you know, since our childhood. So yes, if you could help someone, that's a great thing, right? So that's how we got into Biotechnica. That's how we started Biotechnica. In fact, everything we do today is all about promoting biosciences. It's all about promoting research in biosciences. It's all about promoting biotechnology sector, pharma sector. And uh, that's what we've been doing constantly for the past 15 years. So that's all about to answer your question. So moving ahead, we have some announcements for all of you. I'm coming live on 14th of November, which is Children's Day at 11 o'clock. Okay, it's a Sunday with some grand gifts, some awesome gifts for all of you. So don't forget to tune in and it will only be given to those who attended live. So that's something which you have to know. So with this, we come to an end of our show. Thank you so much for watching TS3, The Shekhar Suman Show. And I'll see you next week. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.